This Ridley O is sponsored by friends of BitcoinStore.com. It seems like Free Talk Live has been inundated by the gun cleaner crowd lately. A lot of those folks have been calling. And although I disagree with them, what really set me off was uh, listening to the show from roughly June 15th, where two of them called in in a row, one after another, both talking up the idea, yeah, we have to rise up, you know, fight back, as in the shooting kind of fight back. And yet, both of them have not yet stopped paying their federal income taxes. What kind of lunacy... Oh, by the way, I need to explain. Well, we know, okay, I think I have kind of indicated what a gun cleaner is, right? There's someone that doesn't really do anything for freedom, but they think that you have to have an armed revolution and kill people in order to have freedom. And they're just sitting around doing nothing until that day comes when supposedly suddenly they'll become brave, although apparently they're not brave enough right now to do anything. Anything peaceful or violent. Anyway, so the, the, the lunacy of this idea that you would, you would essentially be the problem, right? I mean, you're, like, you're dumping money on this institution that's going to come kill you and your friends. Uh, you don't have the courage to stop doing that. But you would be a Michael Collins-style guerrilla fighter out there in the hills, you know, freezing your butt off every night and getting shot at from the sky at some undefined future point down the road. Oh, but of course, you, meanwhile, you'll be funding the drones, right? You'll send the money to the drones and the FEMA camps that you'll later have to fight. It's like you'll be fighting one hand with the other, very bravely. Remember, I'm not a pacifist. I'm not trying to make the claim that there is no time or place to use force. But if there is such a time... These people are not the ones to listen to about when and where it is, or what it is. If they haven't at least already done the basics, recusing themselves in some way from the federal system, or taking some action within it uh, that is so effective it uh, is more important than recusing, they're just not the people to listen to. It's like taking fashion advice from, well, from me. The other most frustrating thing about interacting with these people, which I usually don't have to do, is uh, the, the, you can't really debate with them constructively because the, the thing you keep wanting to say, right, the thing you want to say to them is, well, if you, if you believe so strongly in that, how come you haven't gone out and done it? Well, I can't say that to anybody. I'm never going to say that to any pro-violence person. Because then I'm encouraging them to go do something. That's even worse than not talking to them. So, so I can't I just can't engage with these people very effectively. I mean, because sure, you know, I mean, if, if if you were standing, if I was standing in front of Michael Friggin Collins, right, you know, or Milo Vangelis, like two actual guerrilla fighters who are pretty good at it. I would not be able to sing this tune. You know, I would not be able to say, "Oh, you." You nobody, you talker, you blowhard, who's never done anything useful. Well, I, at least those two actually, uh, you know, Michael Collins practically brought down the British Empire in Ireland 25 years early, and Milo Vangelis practically set up his own country inside Yugoslavia while the Nazis were occupying the country. Uh, Draja Mihailovic did that too. But uh, anyway... Those people are at least the real thing. You can talk, you, you can, you can, you're not talking to hot air when you talk to those folks, the ones that survived. But with the hot air crowd today, the gun rubbers, you can't even, you can't even talk to them about the hot air part because then it starts to, you start to sound like you're encouraging them to do something bad. I am not, and I am never going to start. Should civil fighting break out in the United States, the more it can be delayed, the better. Because look at the history. Look at, let's just take off the top of our heads the four or five best known violent revolutions of the last, you know, since the American Revolution, and compare them, compare what they achieved with all their bloodletting to what we achieved in New Hampshire with no apparent deaths. Okay? and limited, very limited, sacrifice.
First, number one, the American Revolution, uh, of course, best known revolution, and I guess we we'll try to name five since the American Revolution, including the American Revolution, so you see American Revolution, French Revolution, uh, Mexican Revolution, Russian Revolution, 1917, the fifth one would be, I guess, uh, uh, I can't think of one, uh, that rises to that level, so I'm just going to go backwards in time slightly from uh, the American Revolution, and we're going to talk the English Revolution. That's a good one to talk about as a precedent, because at least it's we're talking about sort of the same society, or at least a direct predecessor to today's society. So, uh, starting from point A, you know, some of these revolutions did achieve a little bit. The English Revolution uh, was, uh, I don't know, possibly the least bad of these. The Maybe the American Revolution was, but the, the English Revolution at least uh, limited the power of the king. Kings became more cautious from then on. But again, what what did they have? What price did they have to pay to get that small advantage and a new tyrant in the form of the lesser tyrant, Oliver Cromwell, followed by, of course, the rapid defeat of the briefly victorious revolutionaries who were then thrown back out and many of them hung, and the monarchy reestablished. I mean, it's not real clear what they got out of all that except a prostrated Ireland. That went really well over the next few hundred years. This was what they called a victory. This was a supposedly victorious revolution. Okay, and then we move on to the American Revolution, which achieved maybe the most of any of the revolutions we're going to talk about. It got uh, a, you know, a removal of British rule over the colonies, an establishment of the constitutional system, it did seem to kind of enshrine some role for the average person in certain rights, although it didn't really. And, of course, the Constitution itself was a coup that happened just ten years after the, the, the revolution was won. I am convinced, pretty much, that Americans, colonists, would have been able to get quite a bit more, uh, make quite a bit greater advance if instead of burning down the houses of governors who agreed with them on many things, they had engaged in a mass civil disobedience campaign instead of just, just, just killing stuff. Boston Massacre wasn't even a massacre. It was just a shootout, sort of. And it's also easy to look at America and Canada, and you can compare these two countries that, that, that fought British rule in two very different ways. When the Canadians rebelled, it was much more civic, uh, and it was not. there was no fighting to speak of. I mean, the Canadians, yeah, no, no, no fighting to speak of. And it is true that the that early on in the Canadian situation, I don't think, I don't think Canada's always had more freedom than the United States. But it does now, and it certainly didn't have prohibition in the 30s, 20s. Victory over England was followed by the improper suppression of the Whiskey Rebellion, although the rebellion was technically successful, the Alien and Sedition Acts, starvation in an agricultural paradise because Thomas, I just pretend to like freedom, Jefferson would not let people engage in trade. Mexican Revolution also successful, but I don't really know that much about it, so I'm not really sure I should comment. They did get rid of their emperor slash dictator, whoever he was, and they had or president, I can't remember what his title was. They had very legitimate grievances and achieved their initial goals then things got bad. That's my understanding of the Mexican Revolution. French Revolution, do I even need to say anything? <laughs> the monarchy was awesome compared to what came after. Russian Revolution, same description. So here you have, at best, these armed revolts give you maybe a slight improvement afterwards, after you know, a bunch of people are dead, a slight improvement for the survivors, if you're very, very lucky and restrained and decent and all the other things by the standards of uh, modern-day warfare. But in some cases, you get guillotine fever and gulags. So, although violent revolt can, you know, the fear of it can be good for tyrants to have in them, the actual deed of doing it generally is going to take your society backwards in terms of liberty and in terms of many other things too. So if we could just show you, if I could just show you a little peaceful revolution that achieved, you know, two or three percent gains overall, 
Well, that would that would beat out all these other revolutions, right? And I can show you this, hands down. I mean, I could name like just a third of the things we've done in New Hampshire would would add up to that. Let's just go back to 2004 and 2003 and talk about the, the New Hampshire that existed when free staters started moving here. Admittedly, it was a pretty good place in many ways, but you could not walk up to a police officer and run a video camera safely in 2004. I watched Shane Maxfield, the nicest cop on the Keene police force, make a journalist delete the video from his camera after he filmed something on a public sidewalk. <laughs> it, was, it was an arrest. And now, to Shane's, in, to, to, to Shane's credit, he was doing this to try in his mind, he was trying to protect a suspect that had been filmed. But still, I mean, it was, it was very common to be intimidated into turning your camera off in the mid-aughts. It was very common to be harassed for open carry uh, in the mid-aughts. Michael, uh, Michael uh, Peltier, one of the first free staters, was treated much more roughly than any of us since. Uh, open carry is basically... I mean, I can't even remember the last time there was an open carry incident in, in New Hampshire. It's not because people aren't open carrying. There were people open carrying all over the place at that near riot in Concord, where the where the uh, uh, the gun rights guy touched a police officer, and I don't even think it was I don't even think it was it made the news. You know, cops don't even hardly care. It seems like about open carry anymore. That right has been reestablished in New Hampshire, along with the right to uh, record. These are two of the very most important rights you could have in the state, uh, and and they're back. Uh, this was really when this was without passing any legislation, but Liberty Folk have passed, you know, and repealed some legislation. Uh, well, not so much repealed, but they definitely passed jury nullification, and they shrank the government by tw what was it, twelve percent? I guess actually eleven percent in uh, around twenty eleven. Out and out, free staters make up three percent of the state legislature. Their presence made the difference between Manchester having a spending cap and no spending cap. That's a pretty big deal. And I would guess they've probably won about 20 victories so far in court, including one civil settlement of $5,000. We haven't needed to hurt anyone to get large amounts of publicity. The number of mainstream press articles about the Free State Project, just to name one New Hampshire Liberty thing, that, that's probably been, I guess, over a thousand articles by now, and we now have a degree of media control. So by that I mean we run our own media, and it is of comparable size to mainstream media. So I mean, name the violent revolution anywhere that has made this much net progress. We've made it, and we haven't had to charge any machine gun nests or create any widows among our enemies to do it. This Ridley O sponsored by friends of BitcoinStore.com. Half a million items for sale, often cheaper than Amazon. The easiest way to convert your bitcoins into real world stuff. They're privacy friendly, you don't even have to give your name. BitcoinStore.com.